Everyone, my name is Cameron with Motion Science, and in today's lesson, I'm gonna show you how to build a film overlay effect. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do here is, is I found a clip on Artlist that has different footage in it. You're gonna see it's different images that you would find in a film leader. So what I did is I applied some time remapping to the clip and I freeze framed it. So you can see there's a hold keyframe here and that just says that I want it to freeze on this frame. I did that for each one of these. So I've got another frame here, another frame here, and a frame here that I've added some motion to it. So that was the first thing. I just created four different instances with four different images. To each of these, I added a wiggle expression for opacity. And it's really simple. It's just wiggle 470. So four times per second, I want the opacity to vary by 70%. So from zero to 100% is opacity anywhere from 70 up or down we could go. So what I like to do is I input a value like 40%. So I can go up to 100, I can go down to zero. And there's no right or wrong number here. Uh, I could enter 40%, I could enter 80%. It just depends on how bright you want things to be. So that's the first thing is I applied that same wiggle expression to every one of these clips. Now also, if I hit UU on the keyboard, it's gonna reveal any additional expressions or keyframes I have going on here. And I have a position keyframe, and that's a simple wiggle expression, 12 times per second, I want the image to move by four pixels. And I applied that same expression to each one of these clips as well. So it gives the clip a little bit of movement. It can move by four pixels up, down, left, right, diagonal, just to give it a little bit of a film movement. And I have other tutorials about this on YouTube. So if I play this back now, you're gonna see that we've got these clips that are going in and out with opacity, and they're also just moving very, very slightly, right? It's just very, very subtle, but it adds a little bit of interesting movement to it. Now, if I select all these and I hit P for position, and let's also do scale, you're gonna see that on two of these clips, I have some keyframes set. So this first clip here, I have position and scale keyframes set, and this was just to add some additional visual interest, it's just to have the clip kind of move around in the frame, like maybe it was jumping around. And on this last clip here, it's an arrow, so I just added some position keyframes to make it move from the bottom of the frame to the top of the frame. So if I play these back, this is our base for how it's gonna look. Now I've also got some effects applied to some of these layers. So you can see on this layer here, we've got a levels effect applied and we have a camera lens blur applied. So the levels is just kind of dropping down the brightness a little bit and the camera lens blur, what it's doing is it's referencing this top layer I've turned off here. So if I turn it on, you can see there's a turbulent noise effect applied to this layer and it's just creating some white to gray to black values just to create some visual interest. And what this is doing on the blur, and it, it's really hard to see it, but wherever there's gray values, it's kind of just blurring the edges of the image. So it's a very subtle effect. Sometimes people notice it, sometimes people don't, but it just kind of drives home the fact that this is vintage, right? This is organic, this isn't digital. So that's the first step. If you're eager to create motion design that's gritty, atmospheric, and cinematic, like the example I'm showing you, I invite you to explore the Motion Science membership at www.motionscience.tv mastery. Inside this membership, you're gonna find hundreds of projects just like this one, including the project files, and they can help you elevate your motion design to develop a very striking cinematic style through our trainings, our techniques, and our supportive community. So I definitely invite you to check it out. Now let's go back to the training. Now if I move into the next step here, what we've got is a bunch of shape layers, and these are really simple rectangular or square shape layers. And if I select all of them and hit U, you're gonna see that they have some position keyframes attached to them. And if I play this back, just here on this first one, you're gonna see it's a really simple movement. And before I go any further, just to let you know, this image is pre-comp here. This is all of these layers here, these five layers taken into a pre-comp like so, and dropped at the bottom of the comp here just to keep things organized and clean. So again, we have a shape layer here, a really simple shape layer, okay, with some soft edges to it. Now, if I play this back, it looks pretty basic, but when I apply a fast box blur, it's gonna give it the edges a little bit softer edge. Then we're gonna apply a tent 
to make it this orange color. And then we're applying an echo effect. And this is echo two because I played around with different echo settings and found that these parameters here worked really well. And watch what it does by applying that, right? It's creating instances of this square moving and it's echoing it. So it gives it kind of like a variance to it, right? So if I do that to every one of these layers across the board here, this is what we get next, right? So now we've got these shape layers just kind of moving around the screen, set to add. They've got fast box blur, tent, and echo applied to many of them. Not all of them have these effects applied, but for the most part, I would say 80% of them have these effects applied to them. So the next thing we're gonna do is our next composition here. And we have all of our shape layers, but first of all, I brought in some interesting visual texture to the background. So I dropped this in underneath the images, and this is a Texture Labs grunge texture. And to it is applied a levels effect. And when we turn that levels effect on, you can see it just allows us to see these white specks within the image. So it started here with the levels applied. We've got this just to get some interesting visual interest below our images. So if I play this back, Again, it looks pretty subtle, but it's back there. It's adding some visual interest, right? Now, the next thing we did is we applied some film texture scratches, and these are from the Motion Science Film Texture Packs. If you're in the membership, you do get these included in your membership. And instead of leaving these at 100% opacity, I dropped the opacity down to 50% here and also applied some fast box blur of 1.5 pixels to these. And this is just to to break them up from that digital look again, to make them a little bit more organic and to make them a little bit more subtle. Now, if I turn the shape layers back on here, these are all of the original layers that we did in the last comp. And you can see how things are starting to layer together and it's starting to look more interesting. It's all about the layering here, right? Now, what I did is I took each of these red layers and I just duplicated them to create a layer on top of itself, still set to an add mode and if I show you that, that is what this looks like, right? Now, all of a sudden, it looks like there's this really hot burn look to our footage here. And that's what I was going for. Again, I played around with different transfer modes like hard light, screen, add. And I found that this one worked for the most part of what I was trying to accomplish here. Okay, so we have one more step to go here. And that is to apply kind of the finishing touches to this to really take it up another level. First thing I'm going to do is I selected the background texture labs grunge texture and i applied a very simple wiggle expression to the position of that texture just again to give it a little bit of movement like it's on film it's very very subtle but that's all that's required and the next thing we did is added a few more shape layers and again these are just two shape layers that are then duplicated upon themselves just like we did previously so if i go ahead and solo these you can see this shape layer right here has been added and then this one right here has been added. And these are just things that as you're kind of working through the project, you find like, okay, well this space right here could use a little something extra, or maybe I need to take something away from it. So that's what these were added to the project just to add a little bit of something extra. And then this big red solid here, this is actually from a test and it's just adding, you know, again, some really interesting visual anomalies to the piece. You know, having that bit of red there, kind of breaks up all the orange and yellows and it looks really nice. Okay, so we're really close. Let's take this up another level by adding some color here. So we have an adjustment layer called color. And the first thing we have is we have applied some exposure just to bring up the brightness a little bit more, right? This is like, think about like a light shining through this film. And so there's a lot of bright spots here. So the exposure adds that. And then telemetry, if we turn that on, all that's doing is it's kind of, you can see here without it, it's very dark in the blacks and we're kind of bringing up everything to make it less black and white, right? Like very dark values to very bright values. We're kind of like muddying that up a little bit and giving it that kind of analog feel. And then the very last thing we did here is we added some grain over the top. I increased the intensity. The standard is one. I increased it to about 1.7 and you can see there it is. And again, that really brings it to that organic level. And then this is what we're left with right here, right? This is our film overlay effect. So I think it turned out really cool. As always, thank you for watching. My name is Cameron and this is Motion Science.